Greetings and welcome back to Room 303 AP English, the Roberts Lectures. We are in the poetic section and we are now ready to deal with the little poem To the Reader by uh, uh, Ben Johnson. Now, this is an interesting little poem published um, it, with his book of epigrams from 1616 because it's so unbelievably short. I think, I think it's proof that uh, you don't have to have a long poem to have a profound poem. We'll talk more about it. Now, obviously, we've given a number of lectures on Johnson for LearnStrong.net in 303, dates 1572 to 1637, English playwright and poet, obviously a contemporary of Shakespeare. Already we've given lectures on first son uh, as well as first daughter, as well as drink to me only with thine eyes. And now we turn to his little poem, To the Reader, on page 712 of the Roberts volume we're working out of. It runs something like this. Pray thee, take care that takest my book in hand. To read it well, that is, to understand. Now, obviously in these two very brief lines, there's a certain amazing intimacy that can be created. A number of scholars pointing this out. Robert's, in fact, pointing this out as well. This is an amazing little poem. So think about what's going on in this poem. There's a, this is a more complicated poem than it appears. Notice, first of all, it begins with the word pray. It can be pray as in to pray or pray as in to ask or request. Probably the second works better. Pray thee, take care. Now that obviously means be careful, right? But it can also mean something beyond simply be careful to be kind. Take care that takest my book in hand. In other words, when you pick up this book, it is my book. Notice it's not that takest up this book, it's my book. Johnson making this a personal appeal to the reader, right? Read it well, to read it well. What does this mean, to read well? There's whole books that have been written. We think, of course, of the classic How to Read a Book, Mortimer Adler's classic in 303, simply because reading well is different from reading, as we've often said. Of course, our three levels of reading, what does the text say, what does the text mean, how can it, we relate to it, our annotative approach, all predicated on our notion of learning theory as connecting new information to old information. Reading well is different from reading, right? That is to say, read it well. Of course, well here has multiple meanings. A well, of course, in Johnson's day, is that from which we draw water. So it's a powerful word picture having double meaning. Obviously, to read well here as well means to be kind, we might say, right? Notice the colon. That is to say, we're going to get a definition of what it is to read well. And here, we could spend, oh man, we could spend so much time talking about what is to follow. What does it mean to read well? Well, to understand. Now, what does that mean? Well, obviously, we have said it maybe a little bit different in 303, but it's very close. We're not reading texts to like them. That's what we did back when we were in elementary school or middle school. No, no, no. We're not expecting that every text we study, we read, and hopefully read well. We're going to like, in the same way that there's music you like, that she doesn't like, that I like, that maybe you don't like but rather to appreciate. We're not looking to like a text. We're looking to appreciate the text. How does the text work? Notice the request here by Johnson is, hey, we at least try to understand. We at least give me the benefit of the doubt. We at least give my book a chance. We at least try to read it. Think about what Thoreau says in Walden. There are no stupid books or there are no dull books, only dull readers. Same conversation being had here. At 2A, well, obviously the message here is that artists do hope for understanding and appreciation, and obviously appreciation is way more important than simply liking of a text. There's a whole lot of stuff we appreciate that fundamentally we don't necessarily like or approve of because we are the stories we tell and retell, but we're also the stories we accept or reject. And we often reject a story, an idea, a set of lines, but we have to appreciate them first. I mean, we can't reject what we don't appreciate. Finally, at to be notice how profound this poem is, even though it's short. And of course, word order matters, and word choice matters. Words like, well, no question, take care. At 3A, 
The poem I want to go to, I mentioned Thoreau already, but the poem I want to go to, and this is a, uh, a, an interesting idea on the invocation of the muse motif. I mean, we think about that from our study of Homer and Virgil and obviously Milton. But I want to go to Emily Dickinson because Emily Dickinson, of course, so precious to us in room 303. And any chance we have to come back and make a relationship at 380 is something Emily Dickinson wrote, we're going to do it. Emily Dickinson wrote it this way. This is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. The simple news that nature told with tender majesty. Her message is committed to hands I cannot see. For love of her, sweet countrymen, judge tenderly of me. Notice the brilliance for Dickinson is the same request of Johnson. Because I'm sharing this with you, Spend some time with it. Judge tenderly of me. Understand well, Johnson might say. Finally, in 3B, what was a time in your life, just to relate to yourself personally, what was a time in your life when you hoped people would actually understand or appreciate you or what you had done? And how did that, how did that go over for you? And finally, obviously the question here we are in the Roberts text, the whole reason we're doing this is to learn how to read well. How well are you learning to read? Do you feel like, you know, on that rubric of, uh, you know, doing well, doing poorly, where are you on that, on that count? To what degree can you continue to grow as a reader to read well? And of course, if you can read texts well, you might be able to read others well, and then what's the ultimate goal? The Delphi Oracle, Know Thyself, to be able to read yourself well. Well, there you go. Amazing what we can draw out of just a couple of lines. Thank you, Mr. Johnson.